Overextension. Yep. That is basically sprawl. It's 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 not sprawl. Sprawl is governing capacity there. Mm -hmm. Sprawl uh, overextension is kind of like temporary sprawl. It's basically um, there's a concept called coring, which I'll get into once you take your first victory in war. Mm -hmm. um, but overextension is basically the fact that you're expanding to the like a little bit too fast, quote unquote. Even though that's not really what it means. That's what it is. That's what it means in real life, at least. Mm -hmm. Expansion, you literally don't have to worry about. That's all about me. Mm -hmm. That has your colonial range, how far away you can colonize, and how many settlers you would get per tick. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. You will not be colonizing. States and territories, uh, it's not really useful. It just kind of tells you uh, if you have territories. You should have zero territories. Otherwise, if you don't, that's a little problematic, but it's not a big problem. Yeah. Uh, the big one here though on this screen that you kind of got to worry about all the time especially as the ottomans is rebels and possible rebels yep so i don't know if you have any immediately do you i believe you might i have the answer in spartan Separatist. Separatist. For in yeah and in independence for in okay. Yeah. okay so basically separatism is a problem you're going to be dealing with a lot the key with separatism is when you fight them Kill them before they can occupy any territory. The more territory they occupy, the longer separatism stays there, and the more which, likely they are to attack or uh, to rebel again. Is Sinopol and Kassikonians under control? Kassikonians. Okay. It's under control. So, so uh, I don't know how this looks. Do you see in your uh, your list there on your left, top left, or top right? I mean. Uh, no, in states. Okay, in states. It, it should say like diplomats, merchants, armies, navies, etc. Right estates. Here, yeah. Okay, so do you have one that says like rebellions or something like that? What I have is none. It should have like. Except for rebel faction, that's it. Battle rebel faction. factions, that's the one. Okay, so that's what you're going to be looking at a lot as the Ottomans. Uh, if there is ever. 77k where a rebels will spawn. Like I yes. can have the 3.5k. So, Yes. Uh, so don't worry about that 3.5 chance. That's something that's really complicated, and it does the math for you basically. The so what happened in 23? Yes, that is kind of the number that you want to more look at because it gives you kind of a timeline of when uh, revolts are going to happen. Now, mind you, that that can jump up and down based on what if there's soldiers nearby or if you change your stability. Um, what you really want to look at is the percent number Zero that's percent. there. It, Zero percent. Zero percent. That's fine. So means that there's they're very far away they exist but they're not ready to uprise what you got to worry about is if you see one with 80 if you see one with 80 that means oh hell they're about to sprout and you got to get in position to stop them like as soon as you can uh -huh. this is going to be something that you're dealing with a lot um with zealots it's important to beat them first because the moment they occupy a territory they change the religion of that territory hmm which means then you have to use a missionary and waste a missionary on that territory. That was already the correct religion. <laughs> correct being very subjective to the game, of course. <laughs> Put that out there. But um, separatists, very important as well. Uh, separatists basically will... Uh, the, the way separatists work is it's kind of like a self-causing thing where a, co a territory has separatism. That is that means that separatists are going to sprout up, but the yeah, that modifier of separatism slowly goes away over years. Once it goes away, you're never going to have to worry about that territory again for pretty much well, any rebellion. Oh, mm -hmm. um, so you basically once once a separatist takes a territory, that territory gains separatism. Which basically means it'll just prolong it, just and basically mean it'll yeah. just keep adding to the separatism fire, meaning you're going to have to fight them again later, even if you beat them here. So you really want to keep on top of it. If you see that they're about to pop, uh, you hover over that faction that you're looking at, mm -hmm. and it'll actually glow like a blue-purple outline over the territories that are threatening you. Those are the territories that have the potential for the enemy to spawn in. Mm -hmm. So you kind of just want to sit in the middle of them and get ready to 
attack them whenever so, you're ready. So basically, uh, whatever basically, you basically have like your army men surrounding the borders of that area. That's up to you. Uh, there's two different ways you could do it. You could either have just enough people, regardless. You should well, only I, have I just enough people to defeat them. Right away, right? That's fine. Oh, yeah. I want to get rid of them right away. Mm -hmm. you can't, it, rebellions are a fucking slow burning flame. You got to snuff it out, and uh, <laughs> hopefully the candle stops burning. Um, I just want to take. It is not care. something I you're going to get quickly. Land as much as land. Well, uh, you want that land. That's actually kind of the reason why they're pissed off is because you have their land <laughs> um separatism goes away like i said over time as long as they just don't continuously win in fact i found that it seems like depending on how many territories you take at one time two rebellions being successfully cut off before they can occupy anything should be well and easy enough to kick out all separatism from that faction so you shouldn't have to worry about it sorry but like um, is attacking my cat wow out do you need yeah, hold on. Sorry. After a few information before we start to play, I do want to let him out. Well, soon. All right. Um, because there is a lot of information, so it's be a good break for some people. Oh yeah, that'll be just fine. So what's <clears throat> so what's the next thing you got to worry about? Separatism, or you got everything down? What you need? So separatism, I just kind of said it. Make sure you get ahead of them. Don't All let right. them take territories. It'll be a pain in your dick. Dang. Back to the top there. Mm -hmm. Corruption should be the next one. Yes. Which we you have one? Yes, I don't know where. There, there, there it is. On the top, uh, in the bars next to stability. Stability, corruption, yields. Corruption. Corruption, you should always have at zero. Yep, it's at zero. That is just the truth. Uh, and that's good. It should never be increasing, pretty much ever. Uh, corruption causes a lot of interesting problems um, that just are a really big pain in the ass if you have corruption. The AI doesn't care about corruption, which is honestly, in my opinion, a lot of their downfall a lot of time, but whatever. We're playing on normal, by the way. The next thing, prestige. You see that? Yes, I do. Okay, so prestige. Uh, that's literally what it is. It's prestigious, how prestigious your kingdom is, how prestigious you are, how people think, you. oh my goodness, they're so cool, basically. Um, the only rule with prestige is keep it positive. Generally speaking, keep it as high as you can, but if you have to, just keep it positive, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, prestige is primarily gained through time mm -hmm. uh, and victories and wars, among with a lot of events. Events, events, events. Prestige and legitimacy are the two that change the most with events, in my opinion. Right. Next thing, legitimacy. Um, 100% about to bring it to me. 100. Mm -hmm. 100. It should always be 100. It should always be 100. If it's not 100, that's kind of like... Not cool. The thing is, though, legitimacy is generally pretty damn easy to get. Back up. Generally speaking. Um, legitimacy basically measures how le literally legitimate your monarch is. Is he the rightful ruler? As long as you have good legitimacy, you should be getting... No, hold on. Am I backwards? Okay. As long as you have good prestige, you should always be getting legitimacy. Uh, legitimacy ch uh, affects... Diplomatic uh, reputation, which is basically how easy it is for you to convince other people to do things for you, and it affects your unrest. Yep. Next, power projection. This is one that I really couldn't care less about, but I also, that's literally just because it's kind of like, I always do well enough to keep that in the positives anyway. That should always be positive. You should always have, you as the Ottoman should almost have that at 100, or, or like or in, above in 50. Like a lot. Well, I have 19. Currently. Ah, fair enough. Um, let's see. Yeah, so just being a great power is basically how you gain that. Mm -hmm. Is pretty much it. That and uh, winning wars. Mm -hmm. um, after that, you see four pictures of little dudes, yes? Yes, I do. 
All right. First and foremost is your merchants. Your Stand merchants uh, is something that you're going to have to worry about more later, but is kind of something that I realized is a kind of make or break if you know how to use them right. Because merchants control trade. If you would please select the trade view from above your mini map. Trade more. I changed the trade view now. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you should see a whole bunch of shit all over your screen. Economic, economic man for trade. Yep, trade. Hey, oh, whoa, hello. Yes, so this is the trade map. This is a whole complex bullshit lab. Basically, uh, your, ca your, your capital pulls from your trade node. I'm trying to get a, keep, gonna try to keep this very simple. Your capital automatically pulls money from the trade node you're in. The trade node you are currently in being Constantinople. If you zoom out, you can see that. The borders of that trade node do not change. You will be pushing into Ragusa. You will be pushing into Aleppo. Yep. You should be pushing also into Pest and Crimea and... Alexandria and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> so my camp the game does for Constantinople. That's what I got take, right? So Constantinople is your main trade node. Yes, you as the Ottoman Empire should pretty much get a hundred percent in that every time. So uh, the more territory the, the more territory you own in a trade node, the more power you can keep in that trade node. Mm. Which basically means the more power means the more money you get from that trade node, more or less. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing. Okay, so if only your capital pulls money from your trade node, then what the hell is the point of capturing other trade node locations? Well, your merchants, in fact. So I don't know where your merchants are. If you go to your top right, where um, it should say merchants, what are the two locations it says? I, that, I do available merchants on too. Yes, uh, top right. Oh, well, I have two right here. They're okay, at merch. Constantinople, the park. They are in Alexandria. Transfer your trade power to Constantinople. Trade okay, policy so, maximize profits. Yes, so uh, you can cut off there. That's kind of the whole point. You put a merchant in a trade node that is not your capital, but you have power in. Those merchants pull trade power from that location and give it to your main location. Hmm based on the flow of those arrows and you choose which what which pathway to basically go does that make sense do you see what i mean i slightly do but yes okay so that's something that the game sets up for you really well at the beginning you don't have to touch that for a long 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 time to the point where i don't even know if you're going to be worrying about it um but that's all the merchants are really for is manipulating trade nodes um you have a unique option being Islamic. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the option to propagate religion in a trade node. Uh, basically, if you have over trade 50% trade power in that trade node, mm -hmm. uh, you can basically slowly convert people that aren't even in your nation. It's nice. I don't have that option. So you it should always be set to trading policy maximize profit just because there's very rarely useful so how do I types out the map? okay so you just click out of the x uh, of that if you're in the trade node itself otherwise you go to the political map mode to get to the normal default map mode thank you yes oh uh just so you know the the ones that are kind of set there for you uh mm -hmm. the ones like it should say like trade uh religion terrain you can change those as you want. That's up to you. That's kind of how you feel comfortable. What 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 map modes do you constantly go back to to take a peek at something? You could put them, uh, change them up by pressing right click on any given so one map of mode, those. Basically. Yeah, you favorite map modes basically. There's a lot of map modes as you can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right, now the next one up at the top after merchants is colonists. You don't have to worry about those at all. You won't. Be, you will probably have zero of zero your entire game. I, on the other hand, have to worry about that a lot. Colonists, you send them to territories that are not controlled by another nation, and you slowly build a colony there until eventually, over a pretty decent little period of time, 
they become self-sufficient and become just a territory in your country. And they act like any other character territory. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about that. Like I said, uh, there is only one action that you can do outside of colonizing pretty much that a colonist can do. And frankly, you should not worry about it purely and because I have, I have the diplomatics here in the mission. Diplomats. Okay. So diplomats, basically you are using a diplomat almost identical to how you would use an envoy. Yes. Sir. Pretty simple missionary. Uh, you've kind of already dealt with them. Yep. Uh, you sh each missionary can convert one province over time. Mm -hmm. uh, becoming Gaining more missionaries is pretty darn static and usually very low. Mm -hmm. um, the two ways to do that is through ideas, which I can tell you about in a bit, and through mm -hmm. becoming the defender of the faith, which you can do, but it's got some responsibilities. Uh -huh. um, honestly, I wouldn't recommend you do that just because like, it'll be a big responsibility for you and it might get you into trouble um so let's not do that okay. all right so that is all of your resources up there other than age of discovery oh, this is not a resource these are basically the ages yes the four great ages of the of the game age of discovery quite literally as it says the age of discovery you people are discovering the new world your job is to make sure that you get as many of these checked off as possible. So discover yep. America. If you can, you probably won't be able to, whatever. Yeah. Control centers of trade. You should have five centers of trade. You can hover over that little red or green half bar or whatever to see exactly what you got to do. Uh, uh, a large city, you should very easily be able to get. I'll tell you how to get that. Embrace the Renaissance, you should get regardless. Uh, just kind of by doing it. Hold three thrones, you will not get. Present on two continents, it's fucking difficult for you not to. <laughs> and hold on, don't forget, don't forget one. At least five distant vassals at the same time. Yep. Huh? Oh, and humiliate rival. That is a thing. Uh, is humiliate that? rival is kind of a waste for you because you you should be conquering rather than humiliating anyway. So whatever. Why do you care to get those achievements? Basically, because they're basically short term ach achievements. Well, they give you splendor. Splendor is a unique resource to ages. Uh, you see how there is a bunch of little, like there's a jav uh, javelin, yep. uh, a, a hammer, and yep, like there's justified wars. Hover over those. Those are very powerful abilities that you get only if you get enough splendor from having the, those achievements done. Mm -hmm. So ones that you desperately need, uh, improved war taxes. The Guns of Urban, which is, by the way, unique to your country. Uh, let's see, what else was there? Yeah, improved war taxes, transfer subject can be good, but the really big one also is uh, justified wars. Aggressive expansion is going to be your fucking killer. I almost guarantee it. Because aggressive expansion is basically how pissed people are that you're expanding by taking... Co yep, provinces and wars. You, which you'll begin getting the title of the warmonger. Yes, you are a warmonger. You're going to be getting a lot of aggressive expansion. Aggressive expansion, what that does is allows the formation of coalitions. Coalitions are basically where groups of nations say, hey, fuck this dude in particular. Do you want to go to war with him to like put him in his place? And this is going to be pretty much a whole fucking lot of people around you if you're not careful. And, and basic, it can include bad, rather large people. <laughs> basically, oh, yeah. Bad. They are going to invade you, and they are going to fucking shit stomp you. Generally, if they declare a war on you, that means they're going to win that war unless you play really well. No offense. You're brand or, new at the game. You have, will not be able to like, play that well. Or have, like, boat loads of defenses across your borders. If that's the problem. They all, the game kind of auto calculates the fact that you have those. So unless you're building new stuff to defend yourself, just as the war is starting, you're probably going to lose. The game calculates the fact that you're probably going to lose, basically. <laughs> so can you be out game? Can you outthink the game? So if you're in a coalition war, you're you're. Have, have yes. You, no, have you, you can. You can beat. Have you ever? You can beat coalitions. Coalition? I've beat a coalition. Yes. Uh, 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 it's called a punitive war, but yes, a coalition has declared war on me, and I have successfully defended it before. 
How long, um, how long did it took? You could do. It's it's they're usually longer wars. They're a lot longer usually, um, just because of the pure number of enemies usually that end up fighting you. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you after you win your first war how to avoid them. Mm -hmm. All right, just to give through the ages a little bit, uh, there is the Age of Discovery, which is the first quarter of the game. That's the one we're obviously in. Age of uh, then the Age of Reformation, I kind of explained these to you off screen, but that's fine, uh, is basically the age of Protestantism, the Reformed Christianity and Hussite religions, and Anglican. Then absolutely. That's basically when religion for... Basically, depending what you have, uh, just then to, facing them, then facing them. Yes, uh, Age of Absolutism is basically, hey, countries are becoming very, very powerful, very standing, uh, even in terms of their own people. It's basically how absolute rule they are, um, how basically little rights the people have. Um, age of Revolutions is basically the response to the Age of Absolutism, where la revolution happens, the American Revolution can happen, the French Revolutions can happen, the revolutions right. everywhere can happen. Basically, the end, the end, it's game, a shit the show. end of, the, of the entire game, and it goes to the Victorian games. Then, yes, at the end of the Age of Revolutions is the Industrial Revolution, which, which would then game, be which a separate game than the this. Victoria series. Yes, the Victoria series would be the next game in the series. Um, that plays literally right after you quit, uh, goes into the First World War. Uh, I think it goes a little bit after. Uh, and then at that point, you go to Hearts of Fire, but that's not what we're worried about. So, <clears throat> yeah, ages, uh, it's important to know that, like, basically, once you get through each age, it's kind of like you're a quarter mark. So once we get into the Age of Reformation, we're, we are one quarter of the way through our game. Which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And they do have each age does have different mechanics Which I and achievements. We'll, we'll explain when we get to that age. Yes, because I get a feeling I've pretty much we, explained it already. If we say it now, uh, the, uh, yeah. Reformation is just religious wars. Absolutism is the idea of absolutism, and revolutions is the revolution shows up, which we can definitely talk about more when we get to it. I doubt we're gonna keep playing that long though. No, we're, we're basically into the fundamentals then. We can then, if we got the fundamentals, then we could do another session of the next age mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. All right. So if, if that's, said and that's done, the ages. Are we, are we all said and done for this? One, one last thing that we need to worry about, and it's right next to the age of discovery, 